Hello everyone, I am Roshni from MATLAB Helper. Welcome to this video of classification model in machine learning. In this video, we shall see a brief explanation on classification, machine learning and KNN method. And then we shall move on to creating an easy machine learning model to perform a classification task. Let us go into the video. Classification model. A model that is designed to perform a task of classification is a classification model. In this model, we need to divide the data into different desired output labels. For example, let us take this data of green boxes and blue dots. This data must be divided into two different classes in which each one is categorized into one of the labels. Here, we have divided it into class A and class B. But how is this decision determined? The first step for us will be to divide the data into training and testing data. A training data is a data that already has the data classified into different categories, that is A and B here. After classification, this training data is given into a computer for learning. This computer will know about A and B and its features. This process that a computer will follow to learn about a data is called machine learning. After the computer learns about the features of A and B, then we can give the testing data. Since the machine now has some prior knowledge about A and B, it will automatically classify the testing data without human help. From this, we can calculate the accuracy of how correctly the machine can classify. The procedure that the computer is following has many types and these are the types of machine learning that is the k nearest neighbor method, support vector machine, naive Bayes method, discriminant analysis and decision tree method. So these are a few types of the machine learning processes that are available that a computer follows in learning the data. What we are using in this video will be the k nearest neighbor method. None of these methods can be said as the best method in machine learning. Hence, it is always the best approach to try each one out and see which suits your data set. KNN or the K nearest neighbor method. So here the K denotes a variable. It can be 1, 2 or any number. So I'll be explaining this KNN method with the help of an example. Here we have a training data. So this data is already been classified into three different groups. First is A which denotes the red dots, B which denotes the blue stars and C which denotes the green boxes. Now we have a new training data which needs to be classified. And for example, let that be a green box here. And in this example, we shall have k to be 1. So, one neighbor, which is the closest one to this green box will be found. So, we can see from this graph that this green box is the closest one to the testing data. So, the closest one's class will become the testing data's class also. So, now our testing data will also belong to class C. Here it has been correctly classified as a green box. Let us take another case where we have a blue star here. Here we can see the first closest neighbor to this blue star is this red dot. So this blue star will automatically be classified as a red dot also and it will go to group A. But here we can see that it has been wrongly classified. Hence the k nearest neighbor method can be right in few situations and can also go wrong. But the accuracy of the KNN method will increase as you increase the value of k. Let's have the value to be 7 this time. 
Let's now find seven neighboring points to this blue star. So this will be first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh. Here we can see that it has three red dots close to it and four stars close to it in these seven points. Since the stars has the majority closest points, this star will be classified as group C. Now we can see that as the k value increases, the probability that the testing data will be classified correctly also increases. For demonstrating this classification model, we have taken a simple task of classifying three different alphabets. So we have taken the alphabets J, M and V. Approximately 400 people have been asked to write these three letters on a tablet and each of their information has been stored separately in text files. Each text file will be having four columns. And those four columns are time, x, y and p which will be the pressure. So the time taken by a person to write that particular point in a letter and x and y axis for that letter so this will be the x axis points and this will be the y axis points and p will be the pressure which the pen which a person holding puts on the tablet while writing that particular letter so we will be taking this data for classifying three letters let us move on to the code and see how this classification model is built and how we will be able to classify these letters into three different categories. This is the script to create the classification model to differentiate handwritten letters J, M and V. So in order to perform this task, we will be requiring a few data files. First is a sample J, M and V text file which has the data of the letter written by a particular person. The test data will be using this further uh, in the code when we will be testing the accuracy of this model. Next is the features excel sheet. So this sheet uh, actually has the fe features of the different letters written by different people. So our first step here is the CLC clear and close. So the first step in building the model will be to import the data. The read table command will be used to get the input uh, of the text file and this is stored in a variable named letter. We will be reading the j.txt file and storing it in a variable letter. Next is the plot command. So before going to the plot, we will see what is the output of this letter. So here is a table. We have four different columns as explained earlier. We have the time, x, y and pressure. So if we plot this x and y, we will be getting the j alphabet. Here we can see that after plotting, we have got the x and y values. But this j letter is not in proper orientation. So in order to have a proper orientation of x and y axis, we will run the axis equal command. Now we can see that the units are arranged in a particular pattern and we have equal x and y axes and hence we have a proper j here. Our next step, pre-processing of the data. Here the pre-processing that we do will be for the x and time column. For the x column, since the data was written in a tablet originally and uh, when it is converted to a graph here, it may not be in proper orientation. Hence, we need to be multiplying it with 1.5 and also the data range must be normalized that is the x range must be between 0 to 1 in order for easy manipulations and hence in order to convert that we will be multiplying the x data with 1.5. The second pre-processing that we will be doing here is with the time. So as we saw with this table 
here we can see the time values these are actually given in milliseconds this was the time when the person started writing the first point in j and this and the last time would be the time when the person stopped writing so this is actually the value of the timer we need to normalize the time value also ranging from 0 to 1 and hence what we do is we'll subtract each time value with the first time so this will give us a time interval in which the person wrote that point and we are dividing it with 1000 because we are converting milliseconds to seconds now we are plotting this in order to see the changes here we have the plot we can see that the x-axis values range from 0 to 1 and the time values are also changed we can see here that the time values are now ranging from 0 to 1 we'll be repeating the first two steps for m and v also We have the M here. And also V. Our next step will be to compare the features of J, M and V. And find a feature that can be distinguishing factor for that particular letter. First feature that we will be looking at is the duration. The time taken to write the letter. If we see, we can see that the letter V will take the least time because it is easy to write. Another feature that can be used is the aspect ratio. Aspect ratio is the height to width ratio of that letter. If we see for the letter J, the width is very small. The range of the x-axis in which J is present is very small. But the height of J is relatively higher than the width. So the aspect ratio for J is going to be very high. Whereas for M, the width is very high and hence M is more like a square. So the uh, aspect ratio will be around 1. V also will be having a greater aspect ratio compared to M but smaller than that of J. For confirming these features, I have included two variables, duration and A ratio. A is the aspect ratio. Duration is the time that is at the end. So the time when the end point of the letter is written will be the total duration taken to that taken to write that letter. A ratio will be so height by width. So range of y axis by range of x axis. So I will be calculating these two features of all these three letters. So we can run the code. Let us first see the duration value. So the duration to write V is 0 0.2, is around 0 0.3. Duration for M is around 0 0.45. And for J is around 0 0.4. So the lowest duration value is for V as expected. And uh, let us move on to the aspect ratio. For V it is 1.6, for M it is 1.1 and for J it is 3.8. So the aspect ratio of J is very high. Now that we have confirmed that duration and aspect ratio can be used to differentiate these three letters, we shall now plot these two features for the entire data set that we have. For that we will be using the read table command to first extract the details are uh, details from the features excel sheet and we are storing it in a variable called features we shall run this to see what all are the columns available in features we can see that we have the aspect ratio the duration and the character so there are uh, 394 datas that we have around 400 and these are for different letters v j and m the function scatter can be used to plot a scatter plot, but here we are using a gscatter function 
that means a group scatter where different classes will be shown in different colors according to a particular feature so this is the x axis aspect ratio this is the y axis duration and will be having the character so this character will be used to group into a particular category it has automatically grouped it into j m and v according to the character red color is j green is m and blue is v so we can see that uh, the duration is in the y axis and hence v has the least duration the aspect ratio is in the x axis and uh, green has the least aspect ratio j has the highest aspect ratio so these features can now be used to create a model which can be used to classify the letters next we need to create a model and predict the test values creating a model is very simple in matlab and uh, we'll be creating a knn model and for that the matlab command is fit cknn so this fit cknn command has a has many properties attributes in it like we can give the k value by default the k value is 1 and we need to give features so features is according to which it will be classified and character character is uh, j m and b that needs to be classified So the fit cknn command is used for a knn model creation. Next, we are importing the test data that is using vtable command. We'll be using the predict command next. So this predict command will be used to predict the test data. So knn model has already been created, and using that model, we'll be predicting the test data. So this is the command used in MATLAB for that. The output of this predict command is stored in predictions. So it will be in cell. Uh, we are converting it into matrix so cell to matrix of predictions if we run this section we will be knowing the result we can see the model that's created so these are so many attributes present in this model that is the predictor names so we'll be predicting based on the features ratio and duration the characters j m and v so m j m v are the class names we have 394 observations and the nearest neighbor will be found using the euclidean distance method and the number of neighbors is 1 so by default it is 1 this is the test data that we will be using to test the model so i have taken 20 datas for testing next the predictions so here you can see that using the model these predictions are the output that uh, the model is providing if the original test data character and this prediction is equal then it means that the model has predicted it correctly so our final step will be to find the accuracy so this accuracy will tell how many values out of 20 has this model predicted correctly so prediction if the prediction is equal to the character value in the table then it is correct correct will be uh, will be equal to 1 if both these values are equal it will be equal to 0 if they are not equal so finally we'll take sum of is correct so the total number of ones will be calculated that will be the sum we are multiplying it to 100 by dividing by 20 to get the percentage of accuracy we'll run this section here we can see that uh, the model has correctly predicted almost all of the values it has predicted the 5 and 6 values wrongly uh, 17 and 18 also wrong but otherwise other values are being predicted correctly by the model so the accuracy is 80% if you want to improve the accuracy more then you can maybe increase the k value or try with other other models available in matlab other than the knn model because we won't know which model is best for a data set unless we try it out so this is a simple classification model which has an accuracy of 80% that is built in matlab using the knn method thank you for watching this video do like this video if you found it helpful if you have any queries post it in the comment section or get in touch with us follow us on linkedin facebook and subscribe to our youtube channel education is our future matlab is our feature happy matlabbing